always wanted a family. You know, it'll just happen. So why stress ourselves by trying when, you know, hopefully we'll just get pregnant one day. And you know, I'd get those ovulation kits and we'd try for a couple of months and then we'd stop and then we'd try for a couple of months again. And that went on for a couple of years. And at this point now, our friends are getting married, having kids and we're like the, once everyone's like asking us, so are you guys trying? Are you gonna have kids? My OBGYN ordered our testing pretty early on. She didn't tell us to keep trying. She was like, you know, you do have a history of these endometriomas, let's go ahead and get tested. So she ordered my testing and then she said that my husband would need a semen analysis. That day I'll never forget. I remember walking into her OBGYN's office and I was just, you know, like any other guy just walking in. I just wanted to know what my results were. And I, I was so confident that there was nothing wrong with me. I actually thought there might be something wrong with her. And I remember glancing at the area that said sperm count and it literally said NA, like not applicable. Like quickly I was just going through the thoughts, like is that me right now, like what's going on? So she had gone through your results, pretty much everything was still okay with her. She actually, I remember her saying, like she was kind of pointing out the semen analysis to us and she goes, and this is where it tells you what the sperm count is and she like told us what the norm is and she goes, and yours is actually zero. She said like you have absolutely no sperm count and I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, what does that even mean? How can yeah. that be? I've heard of like low sperm count. What is that? What is this? And she's like, it's called azuspermia. And uh, it's a condition where you have absolutely no sperm count um, in your semen. Like everything you think about as a young kid, having your own kids, how are you going to teach your kids how to ride a bike? All those things all of a sudden just didn't apply to me anymore. And it was really freaky. It, it felt really lonely. It felt really scary. First, we had to figure out whether or not I even had sperm. And apparently, Patients with azuspermia, 50% of them actually do have sperm that just doesn't make it out with the semen. So that was literally my entire life was banking on me being in that 50%. I okay. went to see Dr. Shin. I think that that was the turning point for this whole process because Dr. Shin literally is like an angel because he gave me faith. And a lot of this process is mental stability. You have to keep your mind in the right place at all times. You have to manage your expectations. You know, he kind of drew everything out. He, he gave me all the different types of processes that could be done, the different procedures that were available, um, he recommended to do a microdissection. We decided that we were just gonna do the microdissection first. Um, and I can't tell you how nervous I was about that because that day was like a judgment day for me. I was so nervous with what he was gonna say because we had no idea. So it was me and his mom and then we walk in, we follow him into this room and he turns around and he goes, we got it. We both had so much faith in Shady Grove and Dr. Shin and Dr. Yeah. Chang. We ended up doing three IVF cycles. We did the first two back to back like a couple of months after his procedure. You know, we got through the cycle and we only retrieved four eggs. And that was really hard. It was just not, I think, the outcome we had expected. So we did another cycle. We were just, again, we were so hopeful that this was a cycle that was gonna work. It was a Saturday morning. Um, and I don't think I was even expecting a call that morning. I get a phone call and I have Shady Grove saved in my phone, so it said Shady Grove. And I was like, okay, they're probably calling me with an update. And I pick up the phone and it's Dr. Shang. And He's like, I'm so sorry, none of your embryos made it. Um, and it literally felt like our world just like crumbled. Um, like yeah. an hour later, we were at a children's birthday party. Like I remember like as I was like in the line of park, I was like wiping my tears, like cleaning myself up. I'm like, all right, like I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna stay strong. Uh, and we did, it was just hard because we just found out that like our cycle failed. We didn't have any more cycles that we had like plan to do and then we're surrounded by all of our friends and yeah their kids. and their kids and everyone's talking about oh my child just started walking and stuff. I'm just like oh my god I can't hear this like I, can't, I literally can't process this information and right then now you're just it's wondering just so you're like top. is it ever gonna be us that's when we got our little miracle <laughs> Third her time's name, a charm. Yeah, her name is Gabriella. And I thank God every single day for her, for Shady Girl Fertility. We're so grateful. Hey. Our doctors, the nurses, everyone. It's like a big family. We want her to know, you know, mommy and daddy tried really, really hard to have you. You were so wanted. We weren't gonna stop until we had you. You know, you are stronger than you think. And when <clears throat> it's, you know, a matter of the rest of your life, you're gonna get through that. There's like a stigma with men not wanting to get their semen analysis and get tested because they always, almost always figure that it's a woman's issue and it's not. Male factor is a big deal and it's, mm -hmm. and it's, it's gonna make the process a lot easier when you know what you're working with. So if, if there's any infertility situation, I 100% recommend that men get 
an analysis done so that they know what they're going to be dealing with as well.